This video has been created for anyone who's planning to raise their own flock of domestic chickens. We will provide you with sound information, stress good husbandry skills, and give you helpful hints toward raising fresh hatchlings from a hatchery through the critical first six weeks of growth. Whether you're new to raising chicks or a seasoned veteran reviewing this program to improve your technique, we recommend that you watch the entire video before you start your flock. Before we get started with the informational segments of this video, which are housing, feeding and watering, bird arrival, and watch them grow, we want to be the first to welcome you to a proud tradition of raising a poultry flock. This form of husbandry has been going on for thousands of years. You should be proud that your efforts with your flock will be another chapter in the rich tradition that has spanned the eons. You will be responsible for the care and well-being of living things. This responsibility can never be taken lightly. Regardless of the breed of chicks that you will be raising, these guidelines will help you through this responsibility, provided that you are committed to the job. Along with the responsibilities you're taking on, we also encourage you to have fun with your chicks. Now, this may sound trite, but it's important for your success. When we have fun caring for animals, we develop a respect for them as their own beings rather than objects for us to control. Soon we will meet the real stars of this video, our newly hatched chicks. But before we have them, we need to set up an environment that will provide for their needs. Some important factors in a chick's environment are security and protection, cleanliness, space, and temperature. Let's address these concerns one by one. Security for your flock is your top priority. Predators such as rats, mice, and even pets can ruin your flock. Whether the environment you create for your new flock is in a barn, outbuilding, or garage, you need to make sure that the area is secure from these predators. Check for vermin droppings on the floor of the building. Also, most vermin carry a particular odor that makes their presence known. Ensure that these smells are not present. Patch any holes that can let them in. You might need to lay out traps or poison to rid the building of mice and rats. If you do, please follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the use of these products and be careful that you don't contaminate the chicks or anything they come in contact with with toxins. This environment is no place for a cat or dog that could perceive your chicks as a snack. The building should be cleaned thoroughly with a disinfectant cleaner. There are many commercial cleaners made for this application, but you can make your own easily and cheaply. Mix a solution of about one part common chlorine laundry bleach to ten parts lukewarm water. Add the bleach to the water to prevent chlorine from splashing on you. You should wear rubber gloves to make sure that the chlorine doesn't damage your skin and unless you want white spots all over your clothes, wear old clothes that you don't care about. Depending on the size of the area, you may need to mix up another batch of cleaner. This may seem like a lot of work to go through, but trust us, it's very important to make sure that your chicks have the best start possible. Allow the area to dry and air out before you move on to the next step and particularly before you bring the chicks in. A chick's tissues are very sensitive and might be harmed by fumes from the cleaning solution lingering in the area. You will need to provide your chicks with a confinement area. The space you allow them is key to their development. Too little space can cause them to develop bad habits like pecking each other. Too much space could cause them to forget where the food and water are or keep them too far from the heat source that you will also be providing. Creating this area is where your own abilities and resourcefulness come into play. New chicks are relatively small and need about six to eight square inches of space. As they grow, however, the space will need to be increased in proportion to the size of their bodies. A six-week-old bird will need a minimum of one square foot of space. In fact, at six weeks, your chicks will be able to handle as much space as you can practically give them provided that the space is within a secure environment. Constantly changing their location to allow for growth is impractical 
and could lead to more stress on your flock than is necessary. A good way around the problem of demand for increasing space is to construct an area which can grow with your chicks. We'll show you that this can be much easier than it sounds. The materials you use to construct the area for raising your brood may be different from the ones we use, but the general principles will be the same. Our area will be constructed on the floor of the building, which we have already checked for signs of predators, cleaned, and allowed to air out. The walls of the confinement area are made of this cardboard sheeting. It's important to make sure that the walls are at least 16 inches high. Our chicks will be able to jump soon, and we don't want to lose any. We will be raising our chicks during the winter, so the fact that the material we're using will insulate the area and prevent drafts will be a big help. We will be raising 100 birds. Allowing 7 square inches for each chick, we will need an area of at least 700 square inches. Now we have a simple and inexpensive solution to the problem of expansion of the area. As our chicks grow, we can easily give them more space. After the walls are in place, the litter can be put down. The litter or bedding will perform several functions for the chicks. It will insulate for temperature, it'll dry their droppings, and give them a soft, clean area in which to grow. We want to lay down about four inches of clean, dry litter. Litter can be straw, pine shavings, finely shredded newspaper, any absorbent material that's fairly dust-free and not slippery. We're using about an inch of wood shavings and then three inches of straw. These birds evolved having ground under their feet. This ground, or the litter you provide, helps keep their legs from spreading apart as they walk or hop around. A surface that provides your chicks with some traction will help their skeletons and tendons to remain undamaged and become stronger as they grow. Some seasoned professionals swear by raising chicks on wire mesh. For all the benefits this can have, it can have drawbacks. If a chick's foot would get trapped in the mesh, it could be badly injured. Unless you're an expert at raising chicks, we recommend sticking to the use of litter or bedding for your flock. Next, we'll be talking about how to keep your birds warm. Before we do, we just want to add that this environment has been built for new chicks alone. In nature, hens raise chicks one batch at a time. You should never mix age groups of chicks in the same area. If, as your chicks are growing, you decide you just love doing this and want to get more, then start the new ones in a confinement area of their own. The human body temperature is regulated by our bodies to remain close to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. A domestic chick's body temperature is regulated by its body to remain around 102 to 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Just like ours, a hatchling's body temperature is variable. It's important that these variations are allowed to occur normally. Any chilling or overheating can cause artificial changes in body temperature that the chick's body cannot control. This usually leads to bad results. To help your chicks to maintain their optimal body temperature, we recommend keeping the room or building where their confinement area is located at a relatively stable temperature. In the cold months of the year, this may require a heating source that can be regulated. For the confinement area, you have the option of either using heat stoves or electric heat lamps to regulate the temperature. Here, we'll be using electric heat lamps. A good rule of thumb is to use one heat lamp for every 75 chicks, with a minimum of two lamps in case one happens to burn out. It's important that the fixtures you use to suspend the heat lamps above the area are UL approved. You should always follow the standard safety practices in regard to use of extension cords and electrical outlets. Reading all of the directions on all of the equipment you use is essential for safe use of electrical equipment. We have set up two heat zones within our confinement area. In each zone, the temperature is regulated to 90 degrees Fahrenheit at chick level. We will start our chicks at that temperature and then adjust the temperature according to their needs as they grow.
Now that we've constructed a containment or a brooding area, we need to focus on feeding and watering our flock. There are many good commercial feeds for raising chicks. We recommend a chicken starter food for the first eight weeks. Starters offer complete nutrition without mixing or guesswork. Use a starter feed with a coccidia stat to eliminate the danger of your chicks getting an intestinal disorder called coccidiosis, which is a common malady for birds. Be completely sure that the starter is recommended for domestic chickens, as coccidia stats intended for other breeds of hatchlings could be toxic to your chicks. As with the foods we eat, the best way to find out the nutritional content is to read the bag. You are looking for a feed that's high in protein, as well as other nutrients that your chicks will use to build their bodies. Because each feed has specific requirements, you should also read and understand the directions for feeding that come with the feeds you've selected. The general guidelines we will give are not intended to replace the feed manufacturer's recommendations. In other words, if you're in doubt, follow the directions on the bag. Food is relatively inexpensive. Make sure your new flock always has access to it. Don't worry about wasting a little bit of it. Every time they eat, they are further on their way to becoming healthy adult birds. Feeders come in many different sizes and shapes. There are troughs, pans, boards, boxes, and platforms. Whichever you decide to use, it's important that there's enough eating space for your chicks. We're using these flat open boxes. A good rule of thumb is to provide each chick with one inch of available feeder space from day one through their second week. At week three, you'll need to approximately double the amount of space. Your chicks will be growing and will need close to two inches of feeder space per chick. Remember, there are no assigned seats at mealtime. Once your chicks become familiar with the confinement area, they'll go from feeder to feeder to eat. In the wild, these chicks' ancestors were hunters. They're still hunting for food in captivity. Also, keep in mind that these are minimum space requirements. When you are calculating, always round your figures up to allow for more feeder space rather than less. The feed should be in a crumb or granular form. If it doesn't come that way, use your imagination to find a way to get it to that size. A kitchen rolling pin over the feed placed under a piece of newspaper works just fine. You get the picture. Just remember not to allow any contaminants to get into the food. Always work clean and wash your hands first. Hatchlings need plenty of feed available during the first five weeks of development. During this period, keep the buffet loaded at all times, and they'll regulate their intake. After this period of growth, from six weeks on, they respond much better to mealtime feedings delivered when they're hungry. Too much feed after six weeks can cause the bird to develop fat too quickly and can lead to a lot of problems. Chickens and chicks don't have teeth like ours. We use our teeth for pulverizing or grinding food up so that our bodies can digest it. Well, birds have a part of their digestive tract called a crop that helps them grind up the food they've eaten. Grit is a hard granular material that helps the crop work well. Having grit available at all times will help the chicks digest their food. They'd probably be able to digest the starter food just fine without grit, but having it makes them happier. Water is the chick's most important nutrient. A large percentage of its body is water, so dehydration can have a devastating effect on your flock. They should have access to clean, fresh water at all times. Waterers or fountains come in two basic types the simple trough variety, or a fountain that replenishes the water supply on demand from a reservoir above the dish. There are also fountains that replenish from a pressurized water line, but unless you're going to raise hundreds and hundreds of chicks, we recommend going with the simplicity of waterers that you fill by hand. We will be using the fountain type waterers. We want to provide one inch of watering space for each five chicks. Just as with feeder space, demands for watering space will increase as your chicks grow. From three to eight weeks, you'll need to double the amount of linear inches. After week three, 
we'll have two inches of watering space for every five chicks. Remember, these are minimum requirements. When doing your calculating, always round up and give them slightly more space than required. Around the waterers, the litter is going to become wet. It's extremely important to make sure that the litter around the waterers does not remain wet. Wet litter loses the drying effect that litter has on the chick's droppings. Wet litter can breed mold and bacteria. When the litter gets wet, it can get your chicks wet and spoil their ability to regulate their body temperatures. For these reasons, any wet litter should be removed from the confinement area at once. This is so easy to do, yet wet litter can lead to disease and death. By this time, you've prepared for much of the important care your chicks are going to need. But there's just a few more things we need to talk about. For instance, where do you get your chicks? Well, we'd like you to consider Ridgeway Hatcheries of LaRue, Ohio. Here are some of the important factors to consider. You can either pick up your chicks from Ridgeway Hatcheries if you're in our area, or have them shipped to you. With the speed of modern delivery, there's little worry about the health of your chicks in transit. In fact, we guarantee the delivery of live animals and that you'll be satisfied with them. Our more than 75 years of experience as a hatchery, the good breeding of chicks that has come from that experience, the fact that our flocks are blood tested, and our membership in the National Poultry Improvement Plan all add up to greater success for our customers raising their flocks. If you start with good stock, you'll get better results. Before your chicks arrive, you should have a plan developed for taking care of them. We recommend that you keep a log of important facts such as the amount of feed they consume, variations in temperature in the building or room where the confinement area is located, and what you have done each time you've provided any sort of care for them. It's important that you have this log ready before the chicks arrive so that you can track your progress from the minute you've started. You'll need to include a schedule of feeding and watering in your log as well. Set up a check and double check system and stick by it. For example, if you note that there's a huge wet spot in the litter around the waterer on your first morning visit, take care of it, then note it in your log. Check the area in your evening visit and periodically throughout the coming days. Always log what you find. If the area would continue to get sopping wet, you'd know that the waterer might be malfunctioning. The health and success of your flock depends on you. Don't rely on memory alone. The waterers and feeders should be in place when the chicks arrive. The water should be in the waterers enough time beforehand so that its temperature stabilizes to the environment. The temperature of the confinement area should be at the level recommended before, 90 degrees beneath the heat lamps at chick level. The feeders should be filled upon arrival. Before you handle your birds, you should always wash your hands. Just a simple safety precaution to make sure that you don't introduce any germs to your flock. This is the day you've been preparing for, the day your chicks arrive. With all the planning you've done, there's still some things you'll need to adjust along the way. For now, don't worry. This is an exciting moment, and you should allow yourself to appreciate it for all that it is. Introduce each chick to the home you've built for them one by one. Handling them gently, dip their beaks slightly into the waterer, and then set them down onto the litter. This will show them where the water is and give them their first drink in their new home. Chicks can move pretty fast, and they're always unpredictable. And remember, you're about the size of Godzilla compared to them. As you're releasing them into the area, or any time you need to enter the area, be careful that you don't step on them. Believe it or not, even seasoned pros have been known to lose birds this way. A good rule of thumb is to always act as if you're in their way and things will be fine. 
We don't want to get all warm and fuzzy here, but this is the time for you and your flock to begin the bonding process. Bonding is a scientifically proven phenomenon which takes place between most living creatures and their parent or parents. Think about it. These chicks are orphans who instinctively look for a hen to provide for their needs. I know it sounds strange, but you are going to be that hen. Now, don't go spend your money on a hen costume or anything weird like that. They know they need to bond with a hen, but they don't know what a hen looks like. Talk gently to your chicks on a daily basis. It may feel strange at first, but with a little practice, you can do it. Chicks are social animals and need nurturing and attention. Since they will be seeing a lot of you in the coming weeks, if you handle them gently, move slowly and fairly quietly, and always make sure that their needs are met, they will react to you much the same way they react to their own mom. Bonding will cut down on stress and help your flock be happier and healthier. Now that they're all in the confinement area, they should begin to eat and kind of mill around and get acquainted. This is a good time for the first double check of the area. Two heat sources making the temperature 90 degrees at chick level. Check! Waterers full and ready. Litter around them dry. Check! Area secure and draft free. Check! Feel free to spend as much time watching them as you want. Talk to them gently and reassure them that they've found a safe home. As your birds grow, remember to keep the feeders and waterers full. The waterers should be filled with fresh water at all times. Try to listen to the chicks and learn their language of contentment. They make many sounds of happiness. When they're stressed, you'll notice that they make a more shrill, harsh sound. Their chirps are quieter when they're content. Noticing the way your chicks behave will help you understand their needs. For example, notice that they sometimes prefer food that's fallen out of the feeder to food that's in it, or how they constantly search around for food by scratching, searching, and pecking. This behavior is normal. Their hunt for food stimulates their appetite and is an instinctive habit. Behavior can also warn you when you need to make some changes in the area you've created for them. If they're all bunched up around the heat areas to the point where they're stepping all over each other, they might be telling you that the building is too cold, which is making the cooler places of the area too cold. If all of them are constantly staying far away from the warmer places in the area, it might mean that these areas are too hot. Check the temperature and adjust it as needed. If they're always bunched up at the feeders or waterers, that could mean that they don't have enough access to food or water. The point is that you don't want them to crowd each other, step or peck on each other. They will many times move as a group because they're instinctively prone to be a flock. But when they bunch up and crawl all over one another, this behavior can usually be solved by giving them more space or adjusting their access to things they need. By watching what they do, you can learn as much about them as you can from any videotape that could ever be made. A good case could be made for raising as many chicks as you can. With the exception of feed, it costs about as much in your time and other resources to raise a hundred birds as it does to raise 25. You will end up with more live animals for the same amount of work and attention to your flock. After the first week or so with your flock, you can start to lower the heat in the heat zones of your confinement area. Try to drop it about five degrees a week so the chicks can adjust gradually. If you're using electric heat lamps, this can be done by moving the heat source farther away from the area's floor. In the art of raising chicks or any living things, there may be some unhappy moments. You might lose some members of your flock through no fault of your own, and you shouldn't dwell on it. 
In fact, you should never be discouraged when you've made a mistake in planning or get bad results. Get back on top of your game and forge ahead. After six weeks, your flock will be ready to move into a growing pen and begin eating grower rations. As the end of this program is drawing near, we want to wish you good luck with your birds and add a few more suggestions on how to get good results. Although we recommend reading as much as you can about bringing up your flock, common sense can be your best guide. Think before you act. Be careful with applying information others may tell you, and even with what you read. If someone recommends doing something in the care of your flock that sounds outrageous, make sure you check it out with a qualified source. We think you'll find most people who have raised hatchlings of their own willing to uh, take you under their wing. Ultimately, raising your flock is your responsibility. We hope that it is a responsibility that will provide you with good results and a lot of satisfaction along the way. As we've said before, remember to have fun raising your chicks. That's what it's all about. Because we've covered so much ground with this program, we want to include a brief review section for your reference. Let's just review the highlights of each of the sections of this program. In the housing section, we said that security was your top priority, to make sure that any danger of predators damaging your flock has been taken care of. Cleanliness starts with cleaning the building thoroughly and allowing it to dry and air out before bird arrival. Space for each bird starts with seven square inches at day one to a square foot or more at six weeks. Litter should be kept dry. Temperature is controlled by setting up one heat zone per 100 chicks with a minimum of two zones or lamps in case one should fail. The feeding and watering section recommends starting your chicks with a poultry starter feed which contains a coccidia stat. Keep plenty of food available to your chicks at all times by having enough feeder space and by keeping the feeders full. Chicks should also be provided with grit to aid in digestion. Waterers should be kept clean and filled as often as possible. Keep a detailed log of everything from the beginning to ensure your success. Get your chicks from a reputable hatchery for the best results. Release them one by one to the environment by first dipping their beaks in water. Act and speak gently to your chicks and calm them. Begin to keep your log from the first day. Notice their behavior to help you understand their needs. Through their development, maintain the recommended space for the area and space at the feeders and waterers. Back off on the heat in the heat zones over a period of time so their bodies can adjust to the change. Don't become discouraged. Some loss of chicks is normal. Learn from your mistakes. Your flock is your responsibility. Learn as much accurate information as you can about raising your brood. And most importantly, have fun, and you'll do a better job.